We've all lost things from time to time, be it our keys, our phone, or our mind. But some of the world's lost trinkets are one of a kind, and in much higher demand than you might expect. These are the 20 most wanted lost objects in the world. Number 20. Fabergé Eggs between 1883 and 1917, Peter Carl Fabergé created 69 jeweled Easter eggs for the Russian Tsar, aristocracy, and elites. Today, decades later, they're still just as valuable as ever, worth millions. Just one problem then, only 61 remain from the original 69 eggs. What happened? Nobody knows. When the Russian monarchy was overthrown and exiled, the eggs just kinda disappeared. What happened is anybody's guess, were the lost eggs destroyed, were they stolen, or did they die with their owners? That's a mystery that we'll probably never get an answer to. Still, Fabergé eggs are as popular today as they ever were, with millionaires fighting among themselves for the opportunity to own one. And given how much they spend on eggs that are known to exist, just imagine how much they'd pay to be the person who finds a missing egg. Yeah, you're looking at an unholy amount of money right there there. Of course, it's not quite as simple as that. I mean, nobody has any idea where the eggs could even be. Even the experts who seem to know everything about the eggs have been unable to track down any concrete information or even hints. So unless you have some interesting superhuman power where you can find lost things, you're probably out of luck. If you do have that power, well, you could make a fortune. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. This book found in the Harvard University Library is one of the most chilling things we've ever seen. A book bound in human skin. Yeah, really, makes you want to vomit, doesn't it? But here's the thing. Books bound in human skin weren't actually all that uncommon. Experts believe that this particular book, called Destinies of the Soul, was covered in the skin of a female mental patient who died of natural causes. It's believed the book's writer, Arsène Hosse, gave the book to his friend Dr. Ludovic Boudland. It was the doctor who added the unusual binding. As always, comment down below with the hashtag JuicyTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Number 19. Holy Grail Surely you all know about this item. Even Indiana Jones went above and beyond to try and track it down. But does the Holy Grail even exist? And if it did, is it something that we would want to mess with? Apparently the answer is yes. One famous legend claims that the Holy Grail was the vessel used to catch the blood flowing from Christ when he was crucified. The very first written record of the religious Holy Grail can be found in the 12th century, when Cradien de Troyes wrote of Percival, an Arthurian knight who set out on a quest to recover the Grail. Every recorded story since has deepened the religious myths surrounding the object. But, since nobody has ever been able to actually find it for themselves, there's no way to separate fact from fiction. Which means everything is true. Maybe the Grail looks like a McDonald's cup? I mean, who can say that I'm wrong? If Indiana Jones couldn't recover the Grail, I'm gonna take a swing and say nobody probably ever will. But, hey, there's always a chance. And if they can pull it off, we just have to hope that it doesn't bring some angry ghost of Arthurian legend with it. I don't want a ghostly knight hucking up my weekdays, you know, it's stressful enough as it is. Number 18. The Amber Room so we all know about the expensive eggs, but that's not all the old-school Russians did. It seems like they had pretty expensive tastes, all things considered. Take for example the Amber Room. Amber Room 
an incredibly expensive room that is as tacky as it is impressive. The Amber Room was constructed in the Catherine Palace back in the 18th century to Sarcosello. The room was filled with gold gilded mosaics, mirrors and carvings, along with panels constructed of, you guessed it, amber. More specifically, around 1,000 pounds of the stuff. Unfortunately, World War II happened and the Amber Room wasn't left unscathed. Germany captured Tsar Cosello and disassembled the room and its panels and art before taking it all back home to Germany. But like with most things taken by the Nazis, the contents haven't been seen since they were stolen. Before the Nazis came along and ruined everything, the Amber Room was considered an eighth wonder of the world. Today, however, the room just doesn't exist and its contents are high on the list of most sought-after treasure anywhere in the world. World. Still, the Catherine Palace has made the best of the situation, building a full recreation of the Amber Room as it probably existed back in the day. Glad to see it looks just as tacky as I could have imagined a gold-filled room would be. Number 17. Crown Jewels of Ireland Yeah. Yeah, we all know that the Queen's crown jewels are very valuable things and all that. But did you know about the Irish crown jewels? The answer is probably no, but you really should. Because if you happen to find them, well, you may well be very rich. The Irish crown jewels aren't exactly called that. They're officially known as the jewels belonging to the most illustrious order of St. Patrick. But sometimes you just need something a little simpler, right? The jewels were created in 1831 for an organization created by George III as King of Ireland. George believed that the Irish should have an equivalent of the English order of the Garter and the Scottish order of the Thistle. And naturally, they needed the jewels to go with it. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to think too much about security as the jewels were stolen from Dublin Castle in 1907. Over a century later, the theft has never been resolved and the stolen jewels have never been found or recovered, making this one of the most fascinating unsolved cases in history. And yet, there's no true crime podcast about it. Good lord, people, come on! The murder well is dry. Come explore the niche world of crown jewel thefts. Number 16. The Florentine Diamond It may not be the Pink Panther, but the Florentine Diamond is about as close as we'll ever get. This light yellow gemstone is one of the most sought-after jewels in the world, and it's highly likely it doesn't exist anymore. Now there's a twist! In 1657, a French jeweler and traveler named Jean-Baptiste Travernier was exploring Tuscany when he first spotted the diamond among the possessions of the Grand Duke of the city. As family heirlooms tend to do, the diamond passed down from generation to generation, eventually transferring to the Habsburg family when the last of the Medicses died. The diamond took pride of place among the Habsburg crown jewels in Vienna and was valued at around $750,000 at the time. That would be an incredible amount of money today. But then things took an unfortunate turn. When the Austrian Empire fell in World War I, Charles I took the diamond with him into exile in Switzerland. But it seems he wasn't a great judge of character as someone close to the family soon stole the diamond and a whole bunch of other gems from the crown jewels and fled to South America. That's uh, not a great friend. Today, nobody knows what happened to the jewels, but some experts believe they were likely recut and sold. So good luck finding that diamond. Number 15. The Battle of Anghiari it's crazy to think there are paintings by legendary artists which are still unaccounted for, but it's absolutely true. One of those paintings, The Battle of Anghihari, a 1505 painting by the master himself, Leonardo da Vinci, and people have conflicting theories on what happened. The central image of the painting showed four men riding war horses engaged in a battle for possession of a standard, but the painting has never been found, leading many to name it the Lost Leonardo. 
However, there has been an endless number of theories on what could have happened to the painting, with some people remaining convinced that it's still around just buried beneath one of the frescoes in the Palazzo Vecchio. That's led to many investigations over the past century, including one as recently as 2012. The team in question publicly announced that they had found evidence confirming that the painting still exists under a section of fresco. However, the actual search for the painting itself ended just months months after the investigation, due to a lot of arguing and conflict between the searchers themselves. Seriously, it took just six months for everybody to fall out and bring an end to the whole investigation. Hmm, not bad, right? Number 14. The Stolen Art if you're as fascinated by heists as I am, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist is something you think about a lot. It's the Black Dahlia of the heist world. The unsolved crime to end all unsolved crimes. In the early hours of March 18th, 1990, two police officers arrived at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, responding to a disturbance call. The guards on duty opened the doors and were immediately tied up, because of course, they were not police officers, they were thieves. In an hour, the thieves got to work stealing 13 works of art, including works by Vermeer, Rembrandt, Degas, and more, before making off into the night. To this day, the thieves have never been identified or found, and none of the art has ever been recovered, with the museum simply keeping the frames empty. The case baffled authorities and art experts alike. As the thieves didn't actually take the most valuable paintings in the collection, they did, however, take The Concert, one of only 34 paintings by Vermeer and currently recognized as the most valuable painting in the world. So if you happen to see any of these paintings out in the wild, you may be looking at quite the reward. Number 13. The Pecking Man Fossil do you remember the story that the British King Richard III was discovered buried under a supermarket parking lot? Well, it seems like that's a pretty common thing nowadays. There's something depressingly poetic about being buried underneath a Walmart. In the 1920s and 1930s, archaeologists found a treasure trove of around 200 Homo erectus fossils within China's Jokudian cave site. The finds were so impressive that the government took action to protect them from the devastation station of World War II, sending the fossils to the U.S. for safekeeping. The plan was to get the bones to a U.S. Marine base and ship the way to safety. But the plan didn't work out like that. Actually, nobody really knows what happened, except to say that the fossils just vanished into thin air and never reached the United States, so where could they possibly be? Turns out that the fossils were just hanging out this whole time. A series of new leads led anthropologists to conclude that the missing pecking man fossils were beneath their feet this whole time. Yeah, they were buried beneath a park parking lot in China, or at least that's the theory. We'll have to hang on and see if the fossils are ever actually recovered, but it seems like if you ever lose something, you should just check beneath the local parking lot. Number 12. Portrait of a Man it's pretty easy to understand why lost art is so highly desired. These are cultural artifacts, often portraying historical events or life as it was back in the day. They're also incredibly eye-wateringly valuable, and people want reward money. So, you know, it's art or money, whichever you think people are more motivated by. This portrait painted by Raphael was yet another tragic victim of the brutal rampage of the Nazis. In 1939, this painting was on display in the Czartoryski Museum in Poland. By the end of the year, Germany had invaded the country, stealing much of its art and other cultural artifacts, including this painting. The plan was to put it in the Führer Museum in Austria, but the museum was never actually built. In fact, for the next few years, the painting was in Hans Frank's chalet in Germany until at least 1945. Frank was in charge of occupied Poland, overseeing much of the devastating and inhumane atrocities committed there. When the war ended, Frank was put on trial for war crimes, sentenced to death, and executed, but the Raphael painting that hung in his chalet was missing, and to this day has never been recovered. In fact, nobody has even seen the slightest clue of where it could possibly have gone. Here's hoping they can find it someday. Number 11. Caravaggio's Nativity 
Yet another beautiful painting lost to time, the Nativity with St. Francis and St. Lawrence, is Caravaggio's interpretation of the Nativity of Jesus. And sadly, it hasn't been seen for decades. But the story of who took the painting? Well, that's an interesting story. The painting was completed in 1600, at the very end of Caravaggio's life. Throughout most of the 20th century, it could be seen in the Oratory of St. Lawrence in Palermo, Italy, but overnight in mid-October 1969, two thieves made their way inside, cutting the painting from its frame and presumably wrapped it in a carpet, which they then stole. Authorities immediately began investigating the theft, but could not conclusively prove who actually stole the artwork. Still, they have their theories. According to one investigator, it's believed that the painting has passed hands among the Sicilian Mafia. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Yeah, this is basically the Godfather, but with a piece of artwork. Of course, it's all speculative, and there's no evidence to conclusively prove that this was the work of mobsters. But we all know how much these gangsters love art, right? Still, the Oratory of St. Lawrence decided to do whatever they could, commissioning a replica and hanging it in place of the original. Gotta make lemons out of lemonade, right? Number 10. Jules Rimet Trophy the English don't take a whole lot seriously, but soccer, or football as they call it, is definitely up there among serious stuff. So just imagine, one of the most important trophies in the whole game is stolen, recovered, stolen again, and then disappears. Well, no need to imagine, it happened. In the early days of the FIFA World Cup, the prize was the Jules Remet Trophy. This first trophy was made of gold-plated sterling silver, and lapis lazuli and was used between 1930 and 1970. According to Remet's own rules, any team that won the tournament three times would be allowed to keep the trophy in perpetuity. Well, in 1970, the Brazilian team achieved that incredible victory and got to keep the trophy permanently, forcing the organizers to design the trophy you know and love today. The Brazilians put the trophy on display at the Brazilian Football Confederation headquarters in Rio de Janeiro in a bulletproof cabinet. But guess what? In 1983, the wooden rear of the cabinet was opened by force, and a group of unidentified men stole it. The trophy has never been covered, leading many to conclude that it's probably been melted down and sold. Still, some hold out hope that maybe, just maybe, the trophy is still out there somewhere, waiting to be found. Number 9. Treasures of Nimrud how far back do you have to exist to count as a lost city? There's no hard and fast rule on that. Actually, I'm pretty sure the only requirement to be a lost city is that you have to be, you know, lost. Between 1350 BC and 610 BC, Nimrud was a major Assyrian city in Iraq. Then, things changed, and this city was lost forever. Until a group of intrepid archaeologists arrived in search of hidden treasures and lost artifacts, and what they found was groundbreaking. The team worked alongside Iraqi and US military authorities to comb the area for hidden objects, and they found a treasure trove of the stuff. The treasures of Nimrud, as they came to be known, consisted of more than a hundred pounds of solid gold jewelry, precious metals, and other priceless artifacts. And yeah, they had been lost for a long time, before the first Gulf War to be specific. The rediscovery of the treasures of Nimrud was big news as they were high on the list of most desired jewels in the world. Today they've been preserved and are protected from being lost once more. So I guess this is one item on our list with a very happy ending. Number 8. Leda and the Swan So we've already addressed the missing items belonging to one of the Ninja Turtles, Raphael, so why don't we add another to the list? This time we're taking a look at Michelangelo's Lost Pizza. I mean, uh, painting. 
painting. Yep, uh, that's right. Cowabunga! In ancient Roman mythology, the god Jupiter once took the appearance of a swan to seduce Leda, the queen of Sparta. It's a bizarre and honestly kind of unsettling story, especially when you find out that Helen of Troy was one of the children that came from the whole encounter. Anyway, that's uh, weird, but uh, Michelangelo was so inspired by the frankly weird story that he decided to paint a shockingly erotic painting of the whole thing. That painting, Leda and the Swan, has pretty much vanished, with only a couple of copies surviving. But the original? Well, nobody knows. Some have speculated that the painting may well have been destroyed due to its overtly and uncomfortably sexual content, but we have no real proof that this is the case. For all we know, it's just kinda hidden away in some rich guy's apocalypse bunker. Weird. I think I speak for all of us when I say, I'm not sure we want that thing back. Number 7. Rose B's Treasure yeah, so here's what happened. While Zack and Cody were running around the hotel, Mr. Mosby was gathering a big hoard of treasure to increase his strength, but then… Wait, what? Okay, I've been informed this is a different Mosby… well, I guess this is a story for another time. In March 1863, Colonel John Singleton Mosby, a Confederate ranger and his band of guerrilla raiders, managed to surprise more than 40 Union troops at the Fairfax Courthouse. They actually managed to win the fight without firing a single shot. Mosby, for his part, took advantage of the win, storming into Union General Edward Stoughton's lodging and stealing a burlap sack. Inside the sack was over $350,000 worth of gold, silver, jewelry, candlesticks, and various family heirlooms taken from the homes of Virginia planters. But while Mosby was transporting a bunch of the prisoners back to the Confederate line, he was warned of a huge mass of Union soldiers nearby. Concerned about losing his treasure in a fight, Mosby told his men to bury the sack between two large pine trees, which he marked with his knife. Of course, a fight did break out and it didn't go in the Confederate favor, with many of Mosby's men getting caught and hanged. As for the treasure, Mosby never returned for it, nor did he ever tell anyone where he hid it. All we know is it's probably buried in Fairfax County, Virginia. Happy hunting! Number 6. The Life of General Villa the list of lost movies is longer than you could ever imagine. So many great works of art have been lost to time for so many reasons, from simple degradation, to fire loss, to deliberate destruction, but one is particularly fascinating. The Life of General Villa was a 1914 movie that focused on Francisco Pancho Villa, who was known for fighting many battles against Mexico's leaders. It was heavily fictionalized, of course, because, well, it's Hollywood, right? Still, what makes this movie so highly sought after is that it contained footage of actual battles fought by Villa's forces, making this kind of a time capsule in its own way. You see, Villa had signed a contract with a mutual film corporation that would allow film makers to capture footage of him and his real-life battles in exchange for a share of the profits. That's pretty ahead of its time. Shortly after the movie was released, Philly became an enemy of the United States. He and his band of merry marauders had crossed into New Mexico and killed a bunch of Americans. The US could never find him, but Villa was assassinated in 1923. The movie, however? Well, that was probably destroyed in an act of pro-American publicity, making it one of the great films of all time. Number 5. George Mallory's Lost Camera when you really stop and think about it, it's kind of insane to think that so many people are willing to try and climb Everest. I mean, how many of them actually live to tell the tale? Or to put it another way, how many have proof of it? British explorers George Mallory and Andrew Irvine certainly had proof. In 1924, these two brave adventurers began the trek to the top of Mount Everest, only to disappear on June 8th. To this day, nobody knows if either of them have made it to the top, but the discovery of Mallory's body in 1999 suggests that they didn't. Irvine, meanwhile, has never been found, but according to experts, when people eventually find Irvine's body, they'll also find the camera that Mallory and Irvine brought with them to capture the adventure. And if the contents can be discovered, we may know once and for all whether or not they made it to the top. 
Of course, that's a big ask. Nobody as yet has been able to find even a clue as to where Irvine could be. It begs more questions. If he's not anywhere near Mallory's body, did he try to go it alone? Did he go in search of help on an isolated mountain? Was he attacked by a 1980s slasher movie villain? We just don't know. Number 4. Copper Scroll Treasures if there's one thing I learned from 1980s family adventure movies, it's that scrolls should never be ignored. They almost always offer the location of treasure or a warning for death. Luckily for us, this scroll is more the first thing. There's no death here. Maybe. In 1947, a group of Bedouin was exploring caves overlooking the Dead Sea. The caves were believed to have been inhabited sometime between the 2nd century BC and the 2nd century AD by a sect of Jewish people known as Essenes. Inside the cave, they found a collection of scrolls. All of these scrolls were written on papyrus or leather, except one. This lone scroll was written on copper. Mixed with around 1% tin and written upon it were clues to around 63 gold and silver treasures buried all around the Holy Land. None of the other scrolls contained any such treasure hunt, making this a fascinating Indiana Jones-style find. Altogether, the treasure would amount to around 160 tons of gold and silver, making it the largest hoard ever buried. If found today, you're looking at metal valued at over $3 billion, but how exactly anybody would be able to track it down and uncover it is anybody's guess. Maybe it's time to get that metal detector out and get to work. Number 3. Second Temple Menorah an ancient Jewish story tells of the Maccabees who managed to keep a menorah lit for a full eight days. That menorah was not just any menorah, of course, it was the second temple menorah. And the irony is that many non-Jewish people only know the story from a quick joke on friends. How about that? The menorah was likely created when the temple was built back in the early 6th century BCE, but then things got a little awkward. In the 1st century CE, the Romans sacked Jerusalem, destroying the second temple entirely. But it wasn't enough to just destroy the temple, of course. They also had to ransack the place, stealing all of its ritual objects and treasures. For the next few centuries, the objects were immortalized in the Ark of Titus in Rome until the city fell in the 5th century. From that point on, the menorah seemed to vanish from the face of the earth. This menorah is easily one of the most important ritual objects in Jewish history, and one of the most definitive symbols of Judaism, which only makes it even more depressing to know that we'll probably never see it recovered. At least we'll always have the holiday armadillo. Number 2. Sappho's Lost Poems you may not know the classic poet Sappho, but many of you will know the words that derived from her name and the name of her homeland. The words sapphic and lesbian. Obviously, Sappho was a writer who was, shall we say, captivated by the love and desires between women, and sadly, most of her work is now lost to time. In ancient Greece, Sappho was one of the most prolific poets, composing an estimated 10,000 lines. At that time, her poetry was incredibly well-known and admired, and she was easily considered one of the most highly esteemed poets of all, which makes it such a shame that most of her work is completely lost. And those poems that survive today are almost all in fragmented form. In fact, only one poem, Ode to Aphrodite, is still available in its complete form. Anything else, it's likely that we'll never get to read her work in its entirety. Today, Sappho is mostly known for her sexuality, with one scholar calling her the patron saint of lesbians. I'm not sure if there's anybody specifically competing for that very unique honor, but I'm sure that if she were around today, Sappho would be more than happy to accept the title. Number 1. Ark of the Covenant Come on, you know we had to do it. The Ark of the Covenant is the lost item to end all lost items. Even Indiana Jones went to the ends of the earth to recover it. 
And honestly, if Indy will do anything to get it, we kind of have to pay attention to that. The Ark of the Covenant is widely known as the most sacred relic of the Israelites, with significant religious connotations. The Book of Exodus famously described the Ark as containing the two stone tablets containing the Ten Commandments. Other religious texts have claimed that the Ark contains other religious artifacts. Of course, none of this has been concerned. We just know that we can't let the Nazis get a hold of it. Sadly, we don't actually know where it is. The Ark is generally believed to have been destroyed, captured, or hidden, if it existed at all. Or it could just be with top men. Anything's possible. However, some people still dedicate their lives to finding the Ark no matter what. After all, one story claims that the Ark found its way to Ethiopia and can be found in a cathedral there. Is that true? Probably not, but who knows? As Indy would say, it belongs in a museum. Which of these objects would you most like to discover? And would you do it for the culture or the money? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.